<laughs> oh, this is gonna be fun. I feel like one of those 2012 YouTubers with like no lighting or anything. It's one of those videos. <laughs> Man, I'm so excited for this. Sounds fun. Should hopefully do all right. of modified sound effects. Loving it.
Travelling to Dover meant going through Canterbury. He made sure to pay a visit to avoid the sense of guilt connected with neglect of family. This is the sound that I mentioned in the Penumbra Overture video. This is in the Penumbra Overture and Black Plague and probably Requiem uh, pause screen. That doom doom doom. Man, it looks so warm. The glow, the fog. I just want to check something real quick. I wonder if we changed up here. You took out the Easter egg? For real. I'm not disappointed. Just mad. A couple of my modding friends didn't know that there's a grunt noise here. If you click on the door and then pick up the lantern, rather than the other way around, you hear a little noise. new sounds, the new textures. I have played the remaster mod before. Don't remember when. But nineteenth of August, eighteen thirty nine. I wish I could ask how much you remember. I don't know if there will be anything left after I consume this drink. Don't be afraid, Daniel. I can't tell you why, but know this. I choose to forget. Try to find comfort and strength in that fact. There is a purpose. You are my final effort to put things right. God willing, the name Alexander of Brandenburg still invokes bitter anger in you. If not, this will sound horrible. Go to the inner sanctum. Find Alexander and kill him. His body is old and weak, and yours, young and strong. He will be no match for you. One last thing. A shadow is following you. It's a living nightmare, breaking down reality. I have tried everything, and there is no way to fight back. You need to escape it as long as you can. Redeem us both. Daniel, descend into the darkness where Alexander waits and murder him. Your former self, Daniel. I'm really, really sorry to break the tension. Um, I had a cup of tea.
and I had a little piece of chocolate on my desk that I put the tea on. It's melted the chocolate and it got stuck to the bottom of the cup and I just noticed and I got chocolate on my glove. It's all stuck on the bottom of my cup. I don't know how much smelted on the desk or if I spilt the tea. So I need to try and pause now. <laughs> I'll be back in a second. And as of right now, it is my birthday. Happy birthday to me. Alright, where were we? Fragrant taste of rose lingered in his mouth. Turkish delight, he thought, just like the ones at the consulate in Constantinople. Alexander, is it inside the castle? In a manner of speaking. Come, bring the lamp. You've been to the refinery, have you not? I don't believe I have. Is it connected to the... What did you call it? The inner sanctum. My most precious chamber, Daniel. And it lies well beyond the refinery. In fact, it lies beneath the very stone of Brennenburg. Couldn't quite work these windows, could you, buddy? HPL engine is a tricky, finicky bitch. Behind him, and he knew he would never again see the old town there at Berkeley Square. Another long show in London seemed appropriate somehow. Sixteenth of May, 1839. The unflinching African sun has continued to plague our expedition, making it impossible to dig until dusk. How Professor Herbert managed to find the location in these vast plains of nothingness remains a mystery to me. 
When I asked him about the tomb again, he told me about the legend of Tin Hanan, the mother of us all. An interesting story in its own right, but I can't help feeling there's more. Later that evening, we uncovered a passage beneath the dunes leading to a sand-covered stone structure. The professor was confident it was the tomb we sought and ordered the others to clear the way late into the dark, cold night. Tomorrow, I shall lead the men into the ancient structure, hoping to reach the burial chamber. No matter what the professor is keeping from me, the dig should yield something interesting to take back to London and the British Museum. Mm -hmm. Me, Mark and Palax met up in August. Mark flew over to uh, the UK, spent the week with me and then a couple of days with another friend of ours. And uh, we had a lovely time. And then Palax from his YouTube channel, one of my viewers, uh, an old friend, um, he met us. It was really lovely to meet you. We came all the way down to where we were. We spent the day in London together. We went to a little, small little cafe. We need. <laughs> went to the British Museum. We saw a bunch of exhibits. We walked around the whole thing, or as much as we could, at least. And we just had a really nice time together. We went on a, uh, one of the boats as well. And uh, I'm just so grateful that he came down, that both of them came down. It's such a good time. Wilhelm's contract. I hereby offer my full attention and services to Alexander, Baron of Rennenberg. The contract will reign for a total of three years when my freedom shall return to me. In addition, Alexander, Baron of Rennenberg, is to recommend my services at the Prussian Royal Court and within the sanctum of the Order of the Black Eagle. May no man break this seal. Wilhelm, House of Garrick. My tinker with the CFG files and make the lantern just a little bit brighter. It's kind of not as atmospheric as it could be, I think. Seventeenth of May, 1839. My hands tremble as I write. I feel a need to document my tribulation, for I fear that my memory will fail me if I linger. Today, I took some men and ventured into the dark, ancient passage we uncovered. Our torches burned faintly in the murky air as we slowly made our way underground. The men were superstitious and fearful. They argued loudly, and I felt their strange language getting to me. I mustered my strength and yelled at them to continue down the slopes and broken steps. Slopes. The crudely carved passage confused me. It looked much older than the 4th century structure we had expected. The twisting path emerged into a great antechamber. The walls were lined with statues unlike any I'd ever seen. Despite their unearthly quality, I felt a strange familiarity toward them, which haunts me still. At the far end of the chamber, a great slab of stone sealed off whatever lay ahead. I gave the order to raise it, and as I pushed through the narrow space, the heavy stone suddenly dropped, sealing me inside. I was trapped. That's really interesting. I actually just kind of noticed something. They didn't enter through the way that I thought they did. In Rebirth, they came down a different path. They came from behind the door. I don't know why I thought it was the other way around. I thought in Rebirth we got chased through the Shadow Chase. I thought that was where, that was the passage that we were running through that, they were, that, that you just mentioned, but it's not. So where did they come from? They didn't come from the hunting grounds area. 
because they hadn't explored it yet. They sent a little boy down to explore it. The pieces came from the from the chambers. The cool nest. Wow. Minimalistic. <laughs> Let me see if I can make it a bit brighter. One second. So today, with a couple of things, I don't really know if it's going to do anything, but um, we'll find out. I mean, they just tweaked color values, but I don't know by how much. I just did like a couple of micro units. I think it was 0 0.4, I put up to like 0 0.43. to stay. I think there's more emphasis on light than the lights, because Florian had to change how, I'm imagining he had to change how every light, the light box lights up the area. That's not what I thought would happen. Oh god, I have to revert back. Jesus Christ. Nothing I changed should have interrupted this. I don't know why that happened. Okay. My mistake, my mistake. Okay, I had to get my buddy Mudbill to send me over to the game.cfg file again so I could replace it. Everything's back to normal. The only thing I changed was Lantern cast shadows equal true instead of false. Nothing else should be affected. Fingers crossed it worked. I'm really crossing them. Those flies, oh my god. FPS to false. I said it to true because I thought it would be a bit more stable, but uh, I'm noticing a bit of jittering. See? But I don't really mind too much. Time for the 2023 frictional chair flip. Let's see how many attempts this takes me this time. Oh, I can't cut this out, can I? No. no on screen elements for you. Sorry, buddy. It'll be in the montage, though, I'm sure. the recording you won't believe me. I'm really sorry. This is just what has to be done. We'll count it. This is how many tries it took.
take out the suit of armor? There must be a dude in the suit of armor. Oh, there he is. He got crushed by the rubble. reinforce weak structures. The ground will tremble and there's a risk everything will cave in on us, especially downstairs. Here, here, and there. Let's get the servants working on it. and impossible geometry. The next thing I can remember is the grating sound of stone being lifted, the voices of the Arabs pulling me to safety, and grasped firmly in my hands was the broken pieces of a most peculiar relic. swift when you activate the first one. You hear that? If it stops, you'll have to start over. Isn't all this a bit excessive? You can never be too careful, Daniel. With the Wolfish Altstadt, deep within the East Prussian Woods. For centuries, there have been stories surrounding the hamlet and its neighbour, Castle Brunnenburg. The quiet forest clad mountains dressed with scattered lights is as picturesque as can be. Only the area is haunted by the dark. Ask any local and you'll hear proof of the widespread superstition. All travellers should indulge themselves in such conversations, since it will certainly serve as exciting entertainment. All of them have their own twists on the tales, but there are some motifs that keep reappearing. The Gatherers. This story reaches all the way back to the time of the Thirty Years' War. 
We just said that soldiers who were under their duty got lost in the cold dark woods and were further down to run the grounds. Their bodies wrought by the tainted assaults have left them disfigured and empty of essence. Many have sighted them over the years and described them as horrid revenants. They move silently through the woods, shying away from any beholder. They are called gatherers, and they seem to follow some ambition to steal living creatures. It is their prey which can be heard struggling inside damp burlap sacks dragged behind them which reveal their presence. What dark scheme do they follow? Heinrich Cornelius Agrippa, the well-known erudite, visited Altstadt at the start of the 16th century. He resided in the local inn for a fortnight as he looked for remnants of kingdoms past. During his stay, all the prominent members of society paid notice, and he is mentioned in many records at the time. One day, he went to investigate a burrow in the northwestern glades, only to never be seen again. Heinrich is known to have passed away in Grenoble some ten years later. He dismissed the notion of ever visiting Altstadt, which makes you wonder what really happened. Who was this mysterious man who visited it, the sleepy hamlet in the woods, and what happened to him? The Immortal Baron The Baron of Brennerburg lives a reclusive life with his family at the castle nearby Altstadt, and like most of those of noble birth, rumours are inherited alongside with the Titan. Researching the history reveals little before the castle was consumed by fire in the late 16th century. It was rebuilt by Alexander, a nobleman from the Rhinelands claiming the role as protector of the Prussian state. Alexander helped the region to flourish and remain popular throughout his presumed lifetime. The family has always been secretive when it comes to lineage and heritage, therefore the birth and death of Alexander and his offspring have never fully been recorded. This has spread the idea that the Baron is in fact the one and the same who came from the West over 300 years ago, lived through the time of occupation and joined the coveted order of the Black Eagle along with the great leaders of this country. Falls have endangered my research long enough for their absent minded handling of the human vessels. The sheriff is keeping a watchful eye on the forest and is killing my trusty servants. It's just a matter of time until they follow the child to Brunnenberg. I need to look for him and his men up to avoid further investigation from the public. The wine cellar will therefore be sealed off until the matter has been handled. Either the king's men leave or they will starve. Whatever comes first, they can rot for all I care. Maybe I'll feed them some wine. In a sense, it would solve both my problems. Reef 
true. Do you even see me? Hmm. Maybe if I did this... Two years ago, and then commented like a week ago, saying, Hey man, I used to watch your hardware videos and your runs all the time, and I learned things about the game all the time. I love you. I read the comment. Just didn't get around to replying, and I didn't accept it on Twitter because I didn't know who you were. I know that sounds a bit silly. I think you're the same guy. The reason I don't have some videos public is because I don't remember all the things that I used to say in those videos. I know in one of those videos I did drop the n-word, which I'm fine with saying that. I've, I've been given- I used to be with a, be with a person of colour, and they gave me the n-word pass, so I'm allowed to use it, but <laughs> no, um, because of the nature of how everything is online nowadays. Um, People associated with me, or potentially could be associated with me, I don't want to jeopardise anybody else by out of my carelessness. So but that's not the reason that I keep it hidden mostly. It's just one of the my one of the like afterthoughts that I'm like, that's probably good that that's private, because no one can get to it anymore. Um I still just keep them hidden because I just didn't want a bunch of Let's Plays clogging up my channel. But now I'm making videos again, so I'll probably end up unlisting more of them. But just depends. I 
probably won't do any more unlisting. Because it's a pain in the ass. But. And there's so many videos, too many to keep track of. What's happening? Oh, it feels like my chest is going to burst. Oh. My God, Wilhelm, do something! Except it. We're not getting out of here, Mark. How can you say that? Alexander, you piece of shit! Let us out of here! <laughs> My name is Willem, House of Garrick. These are my final words, my confession, my testimony. Two years ago, I was summoned to Castle Brennerberg. As most of the aristocracy, I was curious about what the supposed knight of the order could want from me and accepted the invitation. The Baron was friendly and offered me a proposition. It dawned on me that the nature of the contract was sorted and that the reason I was chosen was because of my follies of my past and not the honours I've been rewarded with during my time as a soldier. I was to kidnap healthy humans upon its slightest whim and do so without asking questions. In return, he would attest to my character at the Royal Court, advancing my position within noble society. I would like to claim that I struggled with my decision, but it came swiftly, and I accepted wholeheartedly. Ever since that day, I've brought men, women, and children to Benenberg. I can't remember their names, but there were many, perhaps even a hundred. None of whom were ever seen or heard from again. Tonight, the Baron invited me and my men down to the wine summer to celebrate our work. I had my suspicions as we descended the stairs, but he insisted and joined us in a toast. The wine tasted fine, and my men drank without restraint. So begins the punishment for our sins. The Baron has locked us up and returned upstairs. Forgive me for what I've done. I was weak and fell into his diabolic ways. My men are screaming. Their skin has been pierced by their own tangled bones. I can feel my insides revolt against their God-given nature. Blood has begun to pour from my eyes and I can no longer... Yeah, I figured I'd bring up the Edward response just to tell people that I'm aware of it if it's in other unlisted videos. I'm aware of it. Um, I should know better not to keep it in videos. I should know better not to say it in general in the first place. But this is a topic for another day. Florian did a huge amount of work for the remaster, and deserves some praise and love you can give it. The cloth smelt of desert and damp musk. The pieces lay scrambled on top. Too many of them, he thought. Or perhaps too few. Look, it's the tent set up from the fort. He opened the shutters, the fridge shoulders up and fired, the two young men fighting back, and the voices were silenced in a haze of gun smoke. Sorry, I was trying not to sneeze. Florian used 
with the alternate music variations. attempt to produce artificial vitae. The former compounds lack the potency I need, but I sense them close. Calamine and opiment are a given, and the cupro binds them well. This time I will attempt aquaregia instead of aquafortis in hopes it will produce a more even solution. The experiment was unsuccessful. The solution is highly acid, and proves impractical to put to any use except as a detergent. Organic tissue reacts especially violently to the solution, and should be handled with the greatest care. I might be able to use the recipe, but I'm losing hope that I'll find an alchemic solution to my predicament. But many of them, but the fumes will be difficult to salvage. I shall do what I can, move them to the wine cellar. Sweat poured from his forehead and onto the sand valley ground. By the way, if the video is dark for you, it's dark for me as well. I wonder how well the darkness quality is going to translate to YouTube, but we'll find out.
soldier who during three days in Algiers, Saint Lou was finally arranged to take him across the Mediterranean Sea to Gibraltar. Having reached British territory, which is the matter of resilient cabin on the SS Hortensio, headed for London. dark in here. Yes, and there's a good reason for it. But you can light the lamp now if you wish. What's the reason? For the darkness, that is. Stay close. Be careful not to stray. What's the reason? Why is it so dark? Pay attention, Dandel. It's important that you keep going straight and make sure not to stray. More than a month since my last entry. After the event inside the underground chamber in Algeria, Professor Herbert insisted I return to England. He said he didn't want to risk forfeiting the entire expedition lest I took a turn for the worse. An excessive decision, in retrospect. But I'm glad it turned out that way. I found my journal this morning in the haphazard collection of things brought home from Africa. Next to it, lay the broken stone orb wrapped in cloth. I tried to assemble it, but couldn't. The pieces wouldn't fit together, as if they weren't from the same object. Could I have imagined it all? Was there ever a complete orb? I feel the need to continue this journal, even though it was intended for my journey to Africa. This must be something very important. I just know it. I've taken it upon myself to piece the orb back together, but it's been more difficult than one might think. The pieces are behaving strangely. They seem to change colour, shape and texture, but ever so slightly. Yesterday, I took careful measurements and notated any significant markings. Today, I confirmed my suspicions. They were changing. I was terrified and rushed off to see the finest geologist in London, Sir William Smith. 
I approached the subject with care, and we discussed how rocks change form. He told me about the nature of glass, how it eventually collapses on itself, like ice slowly melting over the course of centuries. Smith eased my mind a bit, but I can't escape the feeling that these shards have otherworldly properties. <laughs> Which one is that? Hey. <laughs> hey, they're all doing it. Staircases on top of each other. Do you see that? Or am I just crazy? I think I'm just crazy. <laughs> he crashed through the surface. The dog and the Ligu smothered him as he struggled to make sense of the situation. Did he fall off the boat? See you next time.